Hi, today we're going to be learning about geometric patterns. When you represent a number pattern using physical objects or a diagram, you get a geometric pattern. Just like numeric patterns, geometric patterns can be extended. You can find a rule and terms, you can find out the value or position of the terms in the pattern. It's often helpful to represent a geometric pattern or the, the values of a geometric pattern using a table. Okay, let's have a look at our first example for today. So in this example, we have got a pattern that is made up with matches that have been built up into triangles. You can see over here we've got structure one. It has one triangle made of three, uh, three matches. Then we've got structure two, which has two triangles, each of them made of three matches. Structure three has three triangles, each made of three matches. And then we're going to have space to put in structure four. The first question that we're being asked is to describe the pattern. Okay, so that's what we're going to do first over here. So when we're describing this pattern, you can start off by saying that we are starting with a triangle made of three matches. And for each new structure, We are adding a new triangle made of three matches as well. Okay, so that's one way of describing it. Uh, another way of describing it is to say that the number of matches in the structure equals the structure number multiplied by 3. Okay, now here in this particular example the number of matches in the structure, or the number of triangles in the structure, is the same as the structure number. So we could also have said over here that the number of matches in the structure equals the number of triangles in the structure multiplied by 3 as well. Okay, so that's another way of doing it as well. So we can describe this pattern by saying that we are starting with a triangle that is made of three matches, and then for each new structure, we're adding a new triangle also made of three matches. Or we can talk about the relationship between the structure number and the fact that it's been multiplying by three to find out the number of matches. Okay. The next thing you need to do is draw the fourth structure. So you can see over here, the first structure is one triangle. The second structure is two triangles just next to each other. They're not sharing any matches. They're just placed next to each other. The third structure, again, a new one has been added. So for our fourth structure, this is what you should get. You have four triangles, each of them made of three matches, all sitting next to each other like that. So if you are asked to draw it, then you would need to draw something that looks like that. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to complete the table. Okay, so here we are going to be able to fill in all of the missing values, which is different to what we were doing when we were working with numeric patterns in tables because there they had to give us values. But here we can fill in all the values based on what we can see in the, the diagram in front of us. So for our first structure, we have got three matches. In our second structure, we have got six matches. In our third structure, we've got nine matches. In our fourth structure, we have got 12 matches because each triangle has got three matches. Okay, for our nth term, I'm going to come back to the 10th structure and this one over here. For the nth term, we are multiplying the structure number by three or the number of triangles by three to get the number of matches in that structure. So three N. Okay, you can also look at it and you can see the common difference is 
plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, that gives us 3n. Okay, and because it is 3, we don't need to add or subtract anything. Okay, so now for our 10th term, it's going to be 3 multiplied by 10, which is 30. Okay, so that was a nice easy one to do. Now this one over here, to work out which term is equal to 81, we need to say, what must I multiply 3 by to get 81? I need to multiply 3 by 27 to get 81. So my 27th term will be equal to 81. So my 27th structure will have 81 matches in it. Okay, so that's our first example. Now you're going to do an example for yourself. So in this example, you have got, again, structures made up of matches. In this case, you've got squares, okay? So the structure one has got one square. Structure two has got two squares, but this is different to the previous example because in the previous example, they weren't sharing any matches. They were just placed next to each other. Here, the two squares are sharing this match, and so you're gonna have to be careful, okay? Then structure three, a new triangle or a new square has been added, but again, it is sharing this match over here. Okay, so what you need to do First is you need to draw the next structure. So you need to draw the structure that is going to be our fourth structure over here. And then you need to complete this table. So I'm going to give you three minutes to complete this so that you have enough time for drawing and everything. Okay, so let's go through that example. So the first thing you had to do was to draw the fourth structure. So let's see what that fourth structure, sh structure should have looked like. This is what you should have got for your fourth structure over here. Okay, four squares, all sharing 
or each pair of squares sharing a match in between. Okay, then you have to complete the table. So you needed to find how many matches were in each structure. So for the first structure, we had one square made of four matches. In the second structure, we had two squares, but it's not eight matches because they're actually sharing one of the matches. So there are actually only seven matches in the, se in the second structure. In the third structure, there are 10 matches altogether. There are now three squares, but they're sharing two of the matches, okay? In the fourth structure, you should have found that there were 13 matches altogether. So now we need to go and find out what our nth term is, what our rule is, and we need to find out what the 15th term is and which term is equal to 61. Okay, so let's have a look at each of those. So first of all, to find the nth term. Okay, so first our pattern is 4, 7, 10, 13. So now let's see if there is a common or a constant difference. We've got plus 3, plus 3, and plus 3. Okay. Then, because of those constant, that constant difference of plus 3, we can say that Tn is equal to 3n. But now we have to see how do we get from 3 to 4. We have to add one. Okay, so our rule is 3n plus 1, and that makes sense if you think about it, because if you look at what's happening in the pattern over here, for each new square, I'm only needing to add on three more matches every time I'm adding three matches, every time I'm adding three matches, because the, the match that is being shared is already there. The only one that we didn't already have that match there was the first square. So the first square, we had to have that one match, and then we added the three, and then we add another three, then we add another three, then we add another three. But that first match had to be put there right from the start. Okay, so we have Tn equals 3n plus 1. So that is our rule. Now we need to work out the 15th term. Okay, so for our 15th term, we've got T15 equals 3 times 15 plus 1. 3 times 15 is 45, plus 1 gives us 46. So you should have got 46 for the 15th term. And then we have to work out which term is equal to 61. So 61 equals 3n plus 1. So I need to know what must I multiply 3 by and then add 1 to be able to get 61. So first of all, before adding 1, what would this have been? It would have been 60. So 3 times what is 60? So that means that n must be 20, because 3 times 20 is 60, plus 1 is 61. Okay, so over here in my table, I have my 15th term is 46, and the 20th term is equal to 61. So that's what you should have got for that example. Right, now let's have a look at the next example. Okay, so for this one, we have got structure one has these six dots over here. Then structure two, the rectangle that we had over there has been made bigger. Structure three, the rectangle is even bigger. And structure four, you're going to have to draw for yourself. And then you're going to have to fill in the number of dots that are in all of these different structures. And you need to work out the 26th structure. You have to work out which structure has 82 dots and you need to work out what the rule is. So again, I'm going to give you three minutes to work on this example.
Okay, so let's let's see how you did with this example. So first of all, you had to find out what the, or you had to draw the fourth structure. So let's see what that should have looked like. So for the fourth structure, you should have had a rectangle that had six dots along the bottom and the top and five dots along the two sides like that. Okay, so that's what your structure should have looked like. Then to fill in the table, the first structure has six dots. The second structure has got 10 dots. The third structure has 14 dots and the 14th or the fourth structure has 18 dots. Okay, so that's what we should have got from the structures that you can actually see over there. Now let's go and see if we can work out what the rule is and then we'll come back to these two after that. Okay, so let's go and have a look at the rule. So first of all, we've got our pattern which is 6, 10, 14, 18. So let's see what is going on here. We've got a constant difference of plus 4, plus 4, plus 4, which means that my rule is equal to 4n, and then to get from 4 to 6, I need to add 2. So 4n plus 2. So that's what my rule should have looked like. So in your table over here, you should have had 4n plus 2. Okay, now let's go and work out what, what the 26th term is equal to and which term is equal to 82. Okay, so first for the 26th term, we're working out t26. So that's 4 times 26 plus 2. Okay, so 4 times 26 is 104 plus 2 gives you 106. So that's what you should have got for the 26th term. Then for the term that is equal to 82, we're going to say 82 equals 4n plus 2. So I need to know what must I multiply 4 by and then be able to add 2 to get 82. So let's see what it would have been before we added 2. 82 before adding 2 would have been 80. So 4 times what is 80? 4 times 20 is 80. So that means that n must be 20. Okay, so our 20th term would be 82 because 4 times 20 is 80 plus 2 is 82. Okay, so over here, in my table, my 26th term was 106, and my 20th term is 82. Okay, so that's what you should have got for that example. Now, the last one that we're going to do in this lesson, we've got this one over here. For structure 1, we've got a square that's made up of 4 blocks, a 2 by 2 square. Then for structure two, we've got a three by three square. For structure three, we've got a four by four square. You need to draw the fourth structure and you need to work out or fill it in this table. Now, when we're talking about the squares, we mean the small squares inside, okay? So we're not looking at big squares made up of other squares. We're just looking at the little blocks inside, okay? So I'm going to give you again three minutes to work on this example.
Okay, let's see what you got for this example. So first of all, your next structure should have looked like this. You should have got a 5 by 5 square. Okay, so now let's have a look at our table. So first of all, the first structure has four squares or four blocks. The second structure has nine. The third structure has 16 and the fourth structure has 25. So those are all the ones that we can see from the structures that we've got in front of us. Okay, now our rule. So let's have a look at what is going on with this pattern over here. So first of all, I've got four, nine, 16, 25. Okay, so let's have a look and see if there is a, com a constant difference. I've got plus five, plus seven, plus nine. So there isn't a constant difference, but there is a second level that I could go to, which is constant, plus two, plus two. Now I did tell you in the lesson two lessons ago that if you've got a constant difference on the second level like that that means that you've got a square in your rule okay but now you don't actually even need to really see that because of the way that this has been given to you you can actually see the squares okay so let's have a look back at this over here so you can see that this is a square you can see that this is a square you can see that this is a square you can see that that's a square okay so in this example, it should have been a little bit easier for you to be able to figure out where we're going to go with this rule, that we're going to have a square that we're going to be working with. Okay, but this one is more tricky because it's not 1, 4, uh, 9, 16. It started at 4. Okay, it didn't start at 1. So if you look at it, for structure 1, it is 2 squared. For structure two, it is three squared. For structure three, it is four squared. And for structure four, it is five squared. Okay, so in other words, every time my square is, the length of the side of my square is one more than the structure number. Okay, so for our rule, we are going to need to square one more than the structure number. So it's going to look like this n plus 1 squared. Okay, so whatever my structure number is, my square needs to be, the side of my square needs to be one more than that structure number. So if my structure is the 10th structure, then my square needs to have 11 blocks on each side. It needs to be an 11 by 11 square. If my structure is the 100th square, or the 100th structure, then it needs to have 101 by 101 in the, in the square, okay? So it's whatever the structure number is, I add one and then I square it. So I add one in brackets because I need to square after I add one, okay? So this is what your rule should have looked like for this example. Please be careful, it's not just n squared and it's not n squared and then plus one. You have to add the one before you square it. Okay, so you need to put it in brackets like that. If you don't put the brackets in, you're going to have a problem. It's not going to be the same. Okay, now for the tenth structure. Remember we said it needs to be 11 squared. So let's just go and have a look at how we would actually do that. So we've got T10 is 10 plus 1 squared which is 11 squared, which is 121. So our 10th structure should have 121 blocks in it. And then for our, our structure that's equal to 169, we need to know what must I square to get 169, first of all, okay? And then what is one less than that to get n? So to get what I'm a square to get 169, I need to square root the 169 to go backwards. So the square root of 169 is 13. So 13 is what this whole bracket should be equal to. So when I've got a, a term that's equal to 169, it means that I've got a square like this, which is 13 by 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay? So it's 13 by 13. Okay, so this is 13 by 13. But now remember that our structure number is going to be one less than the number of blocks on a side. So if this is 13, then our structure number or n is going to be 13 minus 1, which is 12. Okay, so our n value, the structure number, is going to be 12 because 12 plus 1 is 13, which is being squared to get 169. Okay, so in our table over here, this is going to be, for our 10th structure, it's 11 squared, which is 121. And over here, for our 12th structure, it is 13 squared, which is 169. Okay, so that's what you should have got for that example over there. And that is how we work with geometric patterns. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.